Mysterious sounds in the school. The sun had set, leaving a soft glow that illuminated the empty corridors of Elmwood High. The janitors were the only ones around at this hour, and tonight, Peter was on duty. He enjoyed the silence, which was occasionally broken by the faint whir of his cleaning machine. As Peter polished the floor of the main hallway, he heard a noise, faint at first but growing louder. It sounded like a series of clicks and taps, echoing through the hallways. He switched off the machine to listen more carefully. The noise wasn't consistent with anything he recognized. Curiosity peaked, Peter decided to investigate. He followed the sound, which led him towards the old music room. The door was slightly ajar, and the sound seemed to be coming from inside. Hesitantly, he pushed the door open wider and peeked in. To his surprise, the room was empty. But the sounds, now clearly resembling the notes of a piano, continued. He stepped in, scanning the room, trying to find the source. To his astonishment, the ancient, dusty piano at the back of the room was playing by itself. Keys pressed down with no one touching them, producing the mysterious melody he had heard. As he approached, the music suddenly stopped, leaving an eerie silence. Heart racing, Peter decided to share this mystery with Anna, the history teacher. She often spoke about the school's past and might know something. The next day, over a cup of coffee, Peter narrated the previous night's events. Anna looked thoughtful. You know, she began, there are tales from the 1920s of a music teacher. Mr. Higgins, who loved that piano. It said he played it every day and even composed original pieces. One day, he mysteriously disappeared, and no one knew what happen happened to him. But sometimes, students and staff would claim they heard piano music late at night when no one was around. Peter gulped. Do you think it was Mr. Higgins' spirit? Anna laughed softly. I'm a history teacher, not a ghost expert. But who knows? Maybe it was him, playing his favorite tunes one more time. After that day, Peter often heard the mysterious piano music during his late shifts. But instead of being scared, he felt a strange comfort, as if being serenaded by the echoes of the past. He would sometimes sit outside the music room, listening to the melodies, feeling connected to a time long gone. Word spread about the self-playing piano, and soon, many gathered late in the evenings to listen. Whether it was Mr. Higgins' spirit or just an old piano with a mind of its own, no one could say for sure. But one thing was certain, Elmwood High was home to a beautiful, ageless mystery that brought its history to life. The Adventures of Balloon Travel One sunny day, Ben and Lucy, two close friends with an insatiable thirst for adventure, stumbled upon an old shed behind Lucy's house. Inside, covered in dust and cobwebs, was a giant, colorful balloon with a basket attached to it. They looked at each other with excitement, realizing the potential for a new journey. With the help of an old manual they found in the shed, they managed to get the balloon up and running. As they started filling it with hot air, their anticipation grew. The idea of floating above the world, 
seeing things from a bird's perspective, was thrilling. Finally, the balloon was ready. They climbed into the basket, released the rope, the ropes, and slowly started to ascend. The houses below became smaller, the people looked like ants, and the cars like tiny toys. They floated above forests, rivers, and mountains, taking in the breathtaking view. As they ventured further, they saw a dense forest below. Suddenly, they spotted a clearing with a beautiful waterfall hidden amidst the trees. They decided to descend and explore it. But as they tried to lower the balloon, they realized the control valve was jammed. The balloon continued to rise, taking them higher and higher into the sky. Lucy started to panic, but Ben remained calm. We need to find a way to descend safely, he said, rummaging through the basket. He found a rope and tied it to a heavy bag. We can use this as an anchor, he explained. After a few tense minutes, the makeshift anchor started to work. The balloon began to descend slowly. It finally landed near the waterfall clearing they had spotted earlier. Both of them jumped out, grateful to be on solid ground. They spent some time exploring the hidden gem, splashing water on each other and relaxing. However, the challenge was far from over. They needed to fix the valve to return home. Using tools from the basket and following instructions from the manual, they managed to repair the valve. As the sun began to set, they launched the balloon once again and headed towards home. The journey back was peaceful. The orange and pink hues of the sunset painted the sky, and everything seemed calm. When they finally landed in Luce's backyard, they were greeted by worried family members who had been searching for them. Despite the unexpected challenges, their balloon adventure was something neither of them would ever forget. It was a testament to their friendship, resourcefulness, and love for adventure. And while they promised their families they would stick to safer adventures in the future, they often looked back at that day, reminiscing about the time they touched the sky. Lost in the Winter Fair Anna was always curious. Her bright blue eyes were forever searching, eager to learn and explore new things. One cold December evening, with snowflakes dancing in the air, her family decided to visit the annual winter fair. Everyone in town would be there, enjoying hot chocolate, rides, and stalls filled with goodies. Bundled up in her red coat, Anna couldn't hide her excitement. As soon as they entered the fair, the sweet aroma of roasted chestnuts filled the air, mixed with the distant sound of children laughing and music playing. Bright lights from the stalls illuminated the night, and Anna felt like she had stepped into a magical world. While her parents were busy buying gifts, Anna spotted a beautifully decorated tent with the sign, Madame Clara, the Future Teller. Without a second thought, her curiosity led her inside. Madame Clara, an elderly woman with silver hair and deep-set eyes, welcomed Anna with a warm smile. For a few minutes, Anna was engrossed in the tales of her future, listening to stories of her adventures yet to come. However, when Anna stepped out of the tent, she realized she was alone. The fair, which had seemed so magical, suddenly felt large and intimidating. The once familiar faces of the townspeople now seemed strange, 
and the laughter and music became a distant echo. Anna's heart raced. She tried retracing her steps, hoping to find her family, but the snow-covered paths all looked the same. Her eyes filled with tears as she wandered aimlessly, feeling lost and scared. Just then, a gentle hand touched her shoulder. It was Mrs. Brown, her school teacher. Anna, are you okay? She asked with concern. Through teary eyes, Anna explained her situation. Mrs. Brown hugged her tightly, ensuring her that everything would be okay. Together, they approached the main stage, where the announcer was about to begin the annual singing competition. Mrs. Brown whispered something to him, and soon, Anna's name echoed throughout the fair. Within minutes, her parents, panicked but relieved, rushed towards the stage. They hugged Anna tightly, grateful to have found her. They thanked Mrs. Brown profusely for her help. As they left the fair, Anna clutched her parents' hands tightly. The night's events had taught her the value of being cautious and always staying close to loved ones. The winter fair was indeed a magical place, but Anna now understood that even in the most enchanting places, one must always be aware of their surroundings.